So this is uh, something that a lot of LNF owners should do and or talk about doing, but don't actually do it. Cleaning the intake valves on the direct injection uh, Cobalt SS turbocharged engine. Um, just going to start right now by taking the intake manifold, the valve cover, and the hot side charge piping off just so I can get to this, this valve cover intake manifold. Uh, I know I've been talking about doing it for quite some time because uh, direct injection is not the ideal for keeping clean valves. I can show pictures of what my valves look like. They're not very good. I'm just going to follow uh, some guides on cobaltss.net. Alright, thanks to this guy for doing the how to remove intake manifold. That's what I'm going to be following. Turbo looks. Don't really know if that's good or bad. I guess while I'm here. Oh, no shaft play. None. sucking in oil, blowing out oil. So uh, this, you can see I removed the intake pipe that goes to the turbo. I showed you pictures of the turbo, or the turbine housing. That is inside the turbo. It's a little oily as I showed you. Um, I removed the variable valve timing solenoids, coil packs, uh, upper charge pipe, the stock one, this bolt right here, which is actually right underneath the charge pipe right there. Uh, that bolt is like a Torx, and it's quite literally the most difficult bolt to get out, so that took a while, so I figured I'd turn the camera off, come back. Um, in the process, I lost a Torx bit somewhere in this vicinity and broke the ECU mount bracket only on one side, so it's at least somewhat in there. I'll probably just glue it back on. Um, disconnected all the sensors on the intake, uh, labeled them accordingly. This is the boost sensor, or boost solenoid. This is the EVAP solenoid. And this is the manifold absolute pressure sensor right here. So uh, I'm just gonna start digging away at some of these cables and stuff. I'll come back with some more done. So uh, just a little update because my camera is very low on battery. Uh, I took everything off the intake manifold. You have solenoid, map sensor, boost solenoid, um, the high pressure fuel pump, uh, anti-pulse thing. Uh, all the connections I labeled, I showed you that earlier. So basically the intake manifold is pretty much ready to come off. Um, the guide on cobaltss.net is very helpful. It took you through everything you needed to. Um, as you see, I took the dipstick out. Um, took the lower charge pipe off. Unplugged the, the throttle body. And it's pretty much ready to pull off. So as you can see, the intake manifold is off. It's just sitting over there. Like that, that is how all of them look 
and that's after about a hundred thousand miles needless to say it's in dire need of cleaning and this is why you should do it and if you're doing what I'm doing and replacing it with a Powell um, PCV you'll never have to do it again so that's why you should check these if you're like most people and you don't think that spending 700 or some dollars on an intake manifold is feasible this is the PCV this is where it actually connects to you can see where the ring is that has oil in it now if say I use this finger which has no oil on it dip it in here you can see that there is a puddle of oil just sitting in there that's all oil that right here and this right here aren't associated with the inside of the motor at all they're just casting holes so those are just there and they just do nothing so if they have oil in them that means that there's some PCV issue somewhere else that's forcing it through the intake manifold gasket which might have had was pretty disgusting as well this is all sorts of nasty this is the outside uh, and this you can see it's all around the PCV there's just gunk so I would highly recommend doing this if you didn't think about it or weren't thinking about it um, just a quick side note the only thing I did do that the guy didn't say to do was to take the high pressure fuel pump bracket off solely because it'll make removing the intake manifold itself so much easier so it's just another two bolts to remove it so why not i just wanted to throw out there this is my pcv valve i pulled it from the intake manifold and blow and suck and it works so my pcv valve was not clogged and all this shit still happened so it's flawed by nature that's just what it is. So I'm um, back here the next day, made a Harbor Freight run to get the walnut shells. This is what you're supposed to use. It's the fine grade. I think it says 24 grit underneath it. So um, got a two foot long blow gun. I uh, got the blast gun. This is the one I went with. I got everything taped off for the first cylinder. You can't see in there because it's really dark. Um, vacuum. Headlamp. Another lamp. Just to be able to actually see inside what I'm doing. And uh, I realized I'm not going to actually video the process because it's actually really dusty. I sprayed the walnut blast gun once, not even in the cylinder, and it's really dusty. Uh, I covered up the entire car, front of the car, with this um, plastic wrap. Just taped it where I needed to. So uh, I guess I'll just come back with some updated views of the first. Or that, I guess that's the fourth cylinder. That's farthest away from the timing gears. So that's the fourth cylinder. So I'll be back. So, I've been working at it for quite some time now. Uh, I don't even know how long it's been. And you can see, try. it's way cleaner than they were. There's hardly even anything on the valve itself now. I'm just trying to work out the port. It's taken a long time and I can hardly see what is oil and what is port because I sprayed this stuff in there while doing it instead of doing it before like everybody tells you to so that's just error on my part but i'm just gonna go eat lunch come back this is just some of the mess that was made i sucked most of it up in the vacuum but it's pretty much everywhere i mean even all over my hands my arm so it's definitely a messy thing but i mean clean valves is it's worth it so just an update on um, valve progress. I've cleaned that one and that's how it looks. It's pretty good. 
I mean, it's not perfect, um, but it is good. The pink you see in there is actually a rag, so it's fine. Yeah, I'll just blow it out tomorrow. Um, but it's pretty clean, especially compared to like this. I have these ones soaking right now. Um, I was using GM Top Engine Cleaner, or AC Delco Top Engine Cleaner. I was using this stuff, uh, letting it soak for a little bit, scrubbing it out with toothbrushes, and then um, drying it all out with a rag, just stuffing the rag down in there. Um, and I even, uh, my dad came out and helped with, uh, suggested stuffing a rag down the one side, wrapping it around, pulling it up the other side, and almost like polishing the back side of the valve. So I did that a few times. I'm pretty sure this is just from the first, um, two valves, but you can see it's pretty bad. And I didn't even get it all. This is just some of what's all in there. So, just chipping away. I can't walnut blast anymore today because these are still soaked. So, that's basically what it looks like now. That's one that I'm working on. This is one that I've just barely scrubbed. And then this is one that I haven't touched at all. You can see little walnut shells got in there. Shit gets everywhere. So, walnut blasting, it gets everywhere, it's all over the floor and stuff. Scrub as much as you can, and blast only what you have to blast. So, uh, a little update here. Um, I did cylinders one and two. Both of them look pretty damn good. Um, they're pretty clean. Um, they're not gonna get much cleaner than that. Um, I personally found it easier not to use the walnut blasting and to just scrub because it just came off easier to me with just scrubbing. And hopefully here you can see they're pretty clean now. So I'm um, gonna finish the last two cylinders. It's easier to just scrub it using the AC Delco stuff and then um, rinsed, I rinsed basically so spray the stuff in there as like a foam, scrub away at it with a toothbrush and then uh, when it comes to filling the whole cylinder up you, there's a certain point where like you scrub and then it's kind of, you've done your scrubbing so I rinse the cylinder with a little bit of tar carb cleaner, cover the cylinder up with like a rag, take this way too big of an air gun and just blow it and that sort of gets it up to like the top of the cylinder and it helps get the chunks out because when you're scrubbing that stuff's breaking it down as you're scrubbing it and you're, you're just kind of left with like a muck so to get the muck out you gotta kind of blow it all out and then wipe up the residue with with a rag so after you blow it out into the rag flip over to another part of the rag and just kind of use a screwdriver and stuff it in there and then that's how you get clean valves all right so this is my last update for valve cleaning uh, I, this is the last cylinder that i had to do and it's about as clean as i think i can get it so now they're all clean A lot better than what they were before <laughs> and that's all I really wanted um, when you go to actually clean this last cylinder or whatever last cylinder you have to do um, I put my car in fourth gear rotated my tire and that seemed to work for me just uh, spray a little bit of the cleaner in there and uh, I rotated my tire until I stopped hearing the stuff uh, bubble because I sprayed some stuff in there and, and it bubbled so uh, it was getting down into the cylinder which is fine because that stuff's meant to be burnt but um just rotate the tire a little bit more so this is 
basically everything I use. This is acetone just to clean the toothbrush. Um, the GM cleaner. Uh, carb cleaner. I use this just to uh, add a little bit of liquid to the uh, top ending cleaner because this stuff turns straight into foam once it leaves the can. And um, to make sure that you actually have something to scrub with, I use a little bit of this too, which also helps with getting some of it out. Um, this $3 two foot long air hose blower thing. So right now I'm just gonna take all this plastic crap off and start removing the valve cover because tomorrow I am painting the valve cover and uh, tapping it for the oil separator. took the valve cover off and this is what the inside of a hundred thousand miles looks like not bad for a hundred thousand miles I guess I haven't really seen anything else to compare so um, today I'm installing my Powell oil separator that's the intake manifold I think the actual separator is sitting right here I'm installing that so to do so this obviously goes to the turbo and this goes to the valve cover this is a just a little 1 8 NPT 27 fitting uh, that goes into the valve cover which means you have to tap your valve cover so this hose usually goes where we're about to be tapping um, and this goes to the turbo I, I'm sorry about the focusing, uh, but it goes to the turbo. Um, this goes to your valve cover through one of these style fittings. And if you, it's right here in case you didn't, yeah, it's like that close. It's really close. And it's so hard to get off that I basically destroyed the inside of this just to get it off because I'm installing the separator. I don't need it anymore. And um, what's not included in the instructions and really should, this fitting that is here is actually uh, the one that this goes on to pulls out okay it comes out completely from the valve cover but you need heat you need some pliers I would use a flathead and a, a hammer um, so you can see this metal shreds all here is all from trying to get this out even down in here um, this is a very shitty piece of aluminum that basically just crumples when you try to squeeze onto it. So I ended up stuffing, it was, this was stuck in here. Uh, you need heat because it's sealed in there pretty tightly. So I used uh, heat and then I rammed a flathead screwdriver in with the hammer and twisted and pulled on the screwdriver until it came all the way out. And you can see that's all the way out and ready to be tapped. 
Um, the tap actually fits in here now, and you can actually tap in there. So I'm not gonna tap it yet because I'm letting it cool down. But um, yeah, so this fitting that goes here for this line needs to be pulled all the way out to tap it and put the uh, Powell separator on. Uh, that's pretty much where I am right now. So I've pretty much spent my entire day so far painting. Uh, I believe it's probably around 4.15 right now. Um, so I've been sanding the valve cover down and painting both the valve cover and the intake manifold. I painted the intake manifold silver just because I didn't want it to stick out too much, but I wanted it to look fresh all the time. And it does. It looks good. And the valve cover I painted black because I thought it was a pretty easy color to work with and my car is black so I figured it would look nice. Um, so that's pretty much all I've done so far. Uh, over here I have the Powell kit. I did tap the valve cover. Um, that's where this little paper towel is sticking out right now. The valve cover is pretty dirty, it's 100,000 miles old, as is the gasket, which I'm reusing because I have no other choice. Um, so, yeah, just kind of been watching paint dry. So I've started reassembly, as you can see. Um, first problem I ran into is this manifold. If you look right here, only has one hole while on this my stock manifold has two holes this is an L and F manifold the manifold over here is an LDK manifold um, so the stock two bar map sensor on the L and F does not line up correctly so I'm just gonna pop out the metal sleeve and file away a little bit until it gets to fit because I need to run these. I don't have the GM Stage 1 tune. Um, so yeah, those are slightly off. However, if you put on the three bar map sensor, it's not as far off. So you'll have to dremel a little bit out or file a little bit out, but not much. So I'm gonna pop out this metal sleeve and just run one bolt, I guess, and make it work. So here's the map sensor actually installed. What I had to do was knock out the center pushing thing, file it down basically till the thicker part hits, and then I cut all the washer material off of the uh, bolt and then I just said screw it and turn it all the way in it scratched the side of the map sensor the whole way down but I don't care as long as it's on and it's tight because um, it's only temporary I do have GM stage 1 sensors right here but I need to get tuned for that and I need to drive my car tomorrow and I can't get tuned by tomorrow so I'm just gonna run these uh, the stock sensor until I can put the three bars on but um got the evap solenoid in this little bracket I took off to make it easier to get off and on put that back on continuing on with the install process so intake manifold is installed everything on the intake manifold is installed um, except for the lower charge pipe which I will get to uh, next I'm gonna install the dips dipstick um, and then connect that to the Powell oil separator and then just kind of route as best as I can the fuel or the uh, turbo side since I'm right here and I don't need to get any fancy sockets. I'm gonna put that on and then put the valve cover on. Uh, that's pretty much it. Just hook up all the fuel damper, uh, little stuff at this point. And as you can see, the valve cover's on. I still have to put the bolts in. While the valve cover was off, I put that annoying bolt in the turbo. Uh, I disconnected the oil separator. Its hose is right there. This is from the dipstick, um, but that's from the turbo. And uh, I disconnected that from the separator to make it easier to put the 
turbo bolt in. I highly recommend doing that because um, it just saves you a lot of hassle of trying to do it here. Um, so I'm gonna put the valve cover bolts in, uh, hook up the intake or the oil separator to here. I got a Teflon tape and uh, screw in the back of the valve cover, the other part of this oil separator. So I'll probably take this off right here. Teflon tape this and put it into the back of the valve cover. I got the catch can installed. I got all the lines plumbed for it. I'm just working out details like the stock airbox doesn't fit with that there, so I have to kind of get a rig it and make it work until I can get an aftermarket airbox. Um, so I'm just about to put the intake tube to the turbo on and let's see if anything hits because this is raised up high, which makes me believe it's going to hit the hood. So, just gonna put it all on, see if it fits. Alright, so everything in the engine bay is pretty much done. Uh, the reason you see coil packs hanging, or the uh, plugs hanging, I'm actually gonna turn the motor over a couple times um, with the pedal all the way to the floor just to get anything that could be in the cylinders out. Key in the ignition, clutch all the way down, neutral, pedal all the way to the floor. Right. And that's it. He is out of the ignition. I'm gonna go put the plugs back in. And then start it up for the first time. Check for any leaks. All right, coils are in, everything's tight. Uh, I'm gonna hop in and give it the first start. Clutch in, gonna let the fuel pump prime because there shouldn't be any fuel in there. And that's the first start. Don't see any leaks. And just like that, the car is out of the garage. Uh, I took it on a test drive. I Got it to full boost probably four times, five times. No problems whatsoever. I'd stopped at a gas station and checked for leaks. There was no leaks. Just a small update as for uh, fitment. As you can see right here, this does not hit the airbox. Um, this black T down here does. Uh, I can try my best to show you how it does. That's probably the best you'll see. It hits the very corner of the airbox, but this bushing. Um, so there's two bushings that hold the stock airbox in and there's there are rubber bushings with nuts that go on top. I could not get this second one to rest here with the rubber bushing in. I had to take the rubber bushing out to get this to, to actually sit. So to have both of these rubber bushings inside the airbox, both nuts on, that's about as good enough as it's going to get. Uh, I did talk to John Powell and uh, he helped me and I showed him pictures of how this is finally routed and he said looks good enough to him. And uh, so I'm gonna roll with this setup. I think this is actually the final setup of it in my car. I'll do my best to kind of show you how everything looks. 
but that's that. Uh, so fitment is fine with the stock box. It just takes a little bit of fidgeting. Um, so yeah, all is good. Don't be